my Toro 4000 series. Toro 4000. The 4000. 4000 series versus the 4000 series. 4000 my rod, baby. 4000 series. Hey guys, this video is all about how has this 4000 series held up for us over the last three years? This unit came out in around 2021. Since then, we have tested this mower against Skaggs. against Hustlers. Against John Deere's. I drove this mower personally across the entire state of Florida. It was 130 miles in one day. Guys, we have put this thing through absolute gauntlets, the most challenging of challenges, the thickest grass, the most epic difficulties you could put a mower through. And I wanna let you know how it's held up for the last three years. Check this out. Three years ago, Toro came out with this machine and they brought us one before anybody else had one. And we had it, we went and test mode with it in our field. And that was like my first glimpse of this machine. It honestly frightened me a little bit. When they first came out, I was not sure about the 4000 series, but Toro needed to make a machine, that's what they told us, that one, could fit other hydraulic options, and they needed to update their platform because they needed a new styling and all that kind of stuff, because if you don't have new styling occasionally, you kind of get overlooked by some other flashier people sometimes. And they also needed to make a platform that would hold and be a good platform for EV or for uh, lithium product, right? So they needed a new platform that would support you know, battery product. So they came out with the 4000 series and they took away the 3000 series. At first we were pretty afraid. 3000 series was a really strong product for us. The price point was perfect. And when the 4000 came in, it was kind of this unknown for us. Should I even sell it to my good customers? Was this a good replacement for the 3000? Does this make sense financially to buy a 4000? Well guys, we have tested it thoroughly. Toro came said, hey, we want you to try this out. I reached back out to them and said, hey, I'm interested in doing a fundraiser. I want to drive one of these across the state of Florida. And literally their engineers called me and were afraid because it was such a new product that that was such, gonna be such a public event that they were a little nervous. Not because Tor doesn't put a lot of engineering, a lot of like effort into making these things. Just That's a weird thing to do with a mower. And it's gonna be very public on TV. It was on national news, me driving one of these across the whole state of Florida. And Toro supported me and said, hey, we'll do it. We'll support your mission there. We donated a bunch of money to Habitat for Humanity. It was a really cool thing that we got to do with the 4000. Guys, and I drove this thing from six in the morning until seven at night, nonstop, 130 miles, and it ran perfect. It got faster throughout the day. By like midday, it was going almost 15 miles an hour. Now, I did have to overinflate the tire so it could drive on the road well. We had to do extra lights on it and all kinds of kind of upgrades to make it, you know, street safe and that sort of thing. But it handled that amazing. Then I started to notice how well this thing cut in thick, thick grass. It did not bog, it did not stall out. And we had an opportunity to challenge the 4000 series against a Skag Cheetah. A Skag Cheetah is known for cutting Bahia well. It's a powerful machine. And that one had, I think it had a 38 horse Kawasaki on it. Ours only had a 31 horse Kawasaki on it. And we put it in a huge field with thick coping grass and Bahia grass and ran them wide open throttle, full speed. The Toro never bogged. The Skag kept bogging. The Toro ran so fast and did so well. I mean, granted, this was a brand new 4000 series. I get it. And that was a brand new Skag. So every new mower is gonna run well. But how well did it run in that thick, thick grass? It ran really, really well. We kept testing with the 4000 series. We had somebody, an awesome a subscriber, Harry, reach out to us with his John Deere. He had a John Deere 960. He said, hey, Chip, I want to challenge your 4000 series. And me and him put both of these mowers to the test. We mowed Bahia, we mowed Bermuda, we mowed St. Augustine. He rode it, I rode it. It was a fun time. The John Deere did great and the 4000 still did great. The 4000 literally laid down stripes. It looked beautiful. It was fast. The suspension made it so you can mow at full speed. It was very comfortable and it did a fantastic job. Then we had a Hustler. We had a brand new Hex Hustler X1 that we were able to use 
to versus the 4000 series again. And we went and mowed on slopes. We went and mowed Bahia. We went and mowed St. Augustine. And we tested that mower extensively against the 4000 series. And truly, I'm not kidding you. In every test, the 4000 series outcut it, outperformed it. Every time there was one drag race where the hustler had like a second faster time and like a 200 yard sprint, but that's one second, 200 yards. But as far as dispersion, how the grass ejected, the 4000 series beat all these guys hands down. The Skag bogged out and stalled out where the 4000 did not. The John Deere did not cut the Bahay or Bermuda as well as the Toro. The hustler did not hold the slope as well and did not cut the Bahia as well as this 4000 series, not even close. And all of our testing without knowing how well they would do over time, and all of my short-term testing with newer units, they performed amazing. Actually better than the 3000 series all across the board. They cut better, they don't bog, they mow faster, they go faster, and with the MyRide setup, they're more comfortable than all the 3000 series. That's just some basic like functionality, like how do these work, but how do these hold up? These Machines easily last 2,500 hours. They can go beyond. I have some out there that are 3,500 hours and they're still going. As far as individual deck components, they last just as long as any of the 5,000, 6,000 series deck components. The spindles last as long, the pulleys last as long, the belts last as long. As far as the engines go, they offer them in larger horsepower Kawasaki options and that engine has been really good. I've had very few issues with these large block Kawasaki's. There was some oil cooler issues for a little while and that wasn't just with the Tor Toro series or 4000 series, that was a Kawasaki issue. But Kawasaki has hands down been so easy to work with. If you have an oil cooler leak, reach out to your dealer. Kawasaki will take care of you on that. They fixed that problem and we're continuing on. The Kawasaki's have been a really powerful uh, powerhouse for these frames and I really appreciate that motor on here. As far as ease to work on for mechanics, the repair times are faster on this. It's uh, easier for my customers to work on, easier for my techs to work on. There's a lot of room around this engine. I can get the both spark plugs very easily, easier than on the 5,000, 6,000, and on the 3,000. On those smaller frames, which I appreciate a small frame, the 4,000 is a little bit longer. It's about six inches longer than the other frames, but they had to turn the engine sideways to get that shortness. And on these, the engine is facing the rear and it's very easy to access all your service pieces. There's a lot of room back here to work on this and I really appreciate that about this machine. Guys, they have made it very affordable and it's still an extremely commercial machine. This is not a residential machine. This is the most decked out, the most equipped 4000 series there is. 35 horse, 72 inch with my ride. This is three coil over shocks. It is incredible how comfortable this is. With big forks, 15 inch front wheels, 26 inch rear tires, 5400 transaxles in the rear. This machine is only $14,999. This is, like I said, the most decked out. They start in the around the 11s, 11,000, and they go up. It is an absolute steal. If you want a machine this equipped in any other brand, you're gonna be in the high teens, 19s, 20s, and this thing is absolutely stacked with features, and I'm blown away with how good of a mower this is and what a great value it is. Guys, if you wanna see any of these specific videos I mentioned in this video, they're all gonna be highlighted in the description. And if you wanna see my personal favorite 4000 series video, it's gonna be right here in the corner. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, put that bell on. I love you guys. See you later.